Thanks for the introduction, David. Next slide. Uh, the usual disclaimers, yeah, thanks. On to corporate overview. We're quite a young company. Um, we have only 243 million shares on issue, a current market cap of uh, $16 million. Cash in hand at the end of the June quarter was $1.8 million, although we are in the process of an SPP currently, which will um, be finalised on the 1st of August, and that is to raise at least another $1.5 million, and we have very good support from that so far, so we're confident of raising that amount of money. Um, some options also on issue, uh, 44 million. Uh, major shareholder is Horizon Minerals. Horizon Minerals is a, is a company that we acquired our two projects from three years uh, ago. You can see uh, board of directors there. It's a mix of technical and uh, financial and business uh, expertise, or very uh, experienced uh, people. I'm a geologist by, by training. Next slide, please. You can see the location of our two projects. So we've got the Menzies and the Goongari projects, both along strike from uh, Kalgoorlie uh, in the eastern gold fields. Uh, we have the Bardock tectonic zone running through both projects, or up to Menzies at least. And historically, that's been a, a great producer of um, gold mines. We have a lot, lot of um, known deposits along strike to the south of us, as, as well down towards Kalgoorlie. Menzies is one of the major um, historic uh, gold fields, gold camps in the eastern gold fields. Um, gold was discovered there in 1896 and through to the Second World War, there was uh, 650,000 ounces at 22 grams per tonne produced from underground mining. There hasn't been any underground mining uh, since then. In the 90s, uh, open pit mining um, uh, started up and only ran for probably about 10 years there when we produced another 150,000 ounces. So, in total, 800,000 ounces at 19 grams per tonne has been produced. Nothing in the last 20 years. So you can see that's a very high grade um, uh, production rate. Uh, and that's what really attracted us to the Menzies project. The Goongari project is very uh, much a grassroots uh, project. 80% of it's under salt lakes and hasn't been effectively explored until we got in there uh, about a year ago and started um, drilling under the salt lakes. There's, there's also gold outside of the, the salt lakes on dry land, but um, it's, it's very grassroots and huge, has very exciting potential for a major discovery. I should point out that at Menzies, all of our uh, resources are in granted mining leases on the highway, on the rail, railway line, and within trucking distance to numerous uh, mills. So we don't need to prove up a uh, a plus million ounce uh, dep deposit to um, justify building our own mill when we can um, utilise other, other mills with toll treatment or, or some sort of joint venture arrangement. Next slide. So our strategic objectives for 2022, uh, follow up our Sir Lawrence Gold discovery at Goongarry. Um, it it's, has a Canana Bell analogue based on its litho structural setting. That's what attracted us to this um, conceptual target under the middle of the lake last year. We made a discovery less than 12 months ago. And with the air core drilling, four, uh, three phases of air core drilling totaling 12,000 metres, we've proved up gold over a two kilometre strike length by one kilometre across strike, and it's open in all directions. That hadn't been drilled before, so divergent discovery. Um, now that we've, we've discovered the gold in the, the air core drilling under the lake sediments, we have initiated diamond core drilling uh, to really prove up the, what the, the um, uh, deeper primary gold structural controls are. And our first um, program underway on the fourth hole, we've already hit five metres at 4.8 grams per tonne, including 2.3 metres at 9.4 grams per tonne. So that's very exciting early on in the program and um, we're almost halfway through that, that program at, at present. Um, at Gungari, also within the same tenement, but um, we're in two tenements, we've uh, got a lot of potential for um, nickel sulfide mineralisation in Kamadiite, like Cambodia style. We've just done the first uh, pass air core drilling and got some encouraging results, so we need to continue on and follow up that as well. Third part of our strategy is commercialising the uh, mining opportunity at, at Menzies via some sort of mining agreement or joint venture uh, arrangement. Or, um, or asset sales. I've just signed a first mining agreement to restart mining at Selkirk, which is just one of the resources at Menzies. 
And then ultimately, we want to continue to grow the Menzies uh, Gold resources, particularly at depth. Uh, we know there's some uh, a lot of high grade uh, potential there. We've you can see from, from the historic production, uh, Lady Shetton, for example, produced 191,000 ounces at 32 grams per tonne. So uh, currently, all the resources are limited by the depth of the drilling. So there's a lot more potential to grow those uh, resources in time. Next slide. So Goongarry, this has been our focus for the last 12 months. It's taken up most of our um, time and effort. You can see there the, what we we'll call the gold, uh, Sir Lawrence Gold Discovery, um, and like I mentioned, about two kilometres long. That oval shape is just to, to give you a, a basic idea of the, the size. It's, but we do have minimisation outside of that. All of those dots are colour coded to the maximum gold value in the air core uh, drill holes, um, projected to service. So that was really just to narrow down where we where we, we need to uh, target the deeper drilling. But the the attraction for us was the knowing the conglomerate unit, the host rock, and those D4 uh, faults. There's also D3 uh, faults going north, east, southwest, intersecting in there. It's unusual. Um, concentration of, of so many faults. And so that, that means that the potential for a very large pl uh, plumbing system for the gold fluids to, to come up um, as the potential for very large um, gold deposits within this area. Um, and we found mineralization on every, every line that we, we drill. Next slide. Now this is zooming in on the same area, but uh, from all of that uh, air core drilling, that's really just telling us that there's gold there. Then we had to figure out within that, that larger area where we wanted to target the diamond drilling. So we've identified nine priority targets and listed there, you can see. And the four drill holes that we've completed and received assays for are the, the, um, uh, uh, the black line traces there in target one, mostly in target three. Uh, hole number four is the one where we, we intersected the 2.3 metres at 9.4 within the wider intersection there. You can see a, a photo of the core there and the cause vein. So that's highly encouraging. Now we need to test all of these targets ultimately, but we will need to come back to this, this one and drill underneath this hole and a long strike. We believe it's striking um, southwest, northeast. Uh, so we'll get back there soon. But currently we're drilling target two and we've just finished a hole on, on target eight. So we've got a lot more, um, at least another 3,000 metres in the current program, but if we keep on in second world, we'll just keep on expanding the program. Next slide. I mentioned the nickel potential. Um, on here, you can see in purple, the highway ultramafic unit running for about 11 kilometers within our, our tenement package there. Uh, you've got the Sir Lawrence um, uh, gold discovery there for scale. Uh, so it's just the east there and a different uh, sequence of rocks. It has produced, um, gold in the past at the uh, Scotia mine, which is Western Mining, uh, mine in the uh, 1969 through the 1977. High grade um, nickel, uh, nickel sulphide. So it's a very attractive um, uh, target area, quite a large target area. You've also got all uh, minerals right with the Saints deposit discovery right on our southern border. So the same sequence of rocks running through there. So initially we just drilled 8,000 metres of air core to really narrow down the focus because we were just based on um, aeromagnetics before that to get us in the, the, the proximate area. And we were very encouraged by the results we got there. Um, multiple intersections in, in good location. We found that the uh, cardioite unit is often folded as well, uh, refolded and, and thrust. So it's actually wider in places than, than we anticipated. So now we need to follow up with electromagnetic survey to look for the conductors and potentially some RC drilling in that part of the lake. Uh, it's, um, it's easy to access and drier and shallower too, so we can get a, a larger jewelry, unlike the uh, the diamond rig, onto those. Uh, next slide. So this is just the northern area. We ended up identifying two, two areas. In the southern area is 1.7 kilometre uh, strike length of, of interest. In this northern area, it's over two and a half kilometres as you can see there, and some of the intersections are highlighted. Once again, within the purple uh, unit, which is the highway automatic. So that's highly encouraging. These, these are not nickel laterite. These are definitely in bedrock, in a semi-fresh material at the base of the air core holes. 
So those grades are not economic, but they, they indicate that we're proximal to, potentially proximal to um, economic grade um, uh, nickel sulfide mineralization. So those are the areas we need to target with electromagnetic surveys in, uh, in the near uh, future. Uh, next slide. Now also we, we recognize that this has had a good gold potential based on the rocks and, and the number of faults and the, the structural setting, in, particularly in that northern area there. So we assayed for gold in the same drill holes and you can see once again in bedrock, four meters at 1.3, 16, within 16 meters at 0.7, that's just an example. There's multiple significant intersections. Uh, with air core, anything over about 0 0.1 grams per tonne is significant because you're only really just penetrating the, 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 uh, the bedrock. The, in, uh, if it was laterated, um, uh, that'd be a different story, but all the lateral has been stripped away from, from this area. So we're going from the lake sediments into semi-fresh material and then uh, ending in the fresh rock. So that's highly encouraging. We need to um, follow these uh, intersections up as well, either with more air core initially or with RC drilling, um, which um, is probably the, the next move there. Next slide. Now on to Menzies. Uh, when we bought the project three years ago, we had a chalk resource of approximately 170,000 ounces. Now we've done a lot of drilling since then and proved up the, the, the chalk resources now to over 500,000 ounces at 1.33 grams per tonne. You can see they all lie within a, a corridor there and over 16 kilometres long. Some of that in between Lady Irene and Selkirk hasn't been tested at all. It's on a set. Some under quite a lot of cover, some AOL and sand cover. But most of the uh, mineralization is within the, the Lady Shenton system, about 60% of our total resources in the center there, right next to Menzies. Um, Selkirk is quite a small deposit, but that's the one I'd mentioned. We've just signed a, a mining agreement with uh, BML Ventures from Kalgoorlie to uh, do a cutback of, of that small pit, basically. And that's uh, planned to be back in production by the end of the year and we're working on the best ways to commercialize the, the remaining resources. As mentioned, all the resources uh, are limited by the depth of the drilling. You can see there on, on the left. So there's a lot of potential to, you know, double or even triple these resources in time uh, with, with deeper drilling. Next slide. There's a summary table of our um, resources. These are all open pitable resources. So Largely, almost all of it's just using a 0 0.5 grams per tonne cutoff, except Yandaga does include a small portion of two grams per tonne, which would be at the base of a, any um, open pit. So it's just open pitable resources. Uh, I mentioned Lady Shenton system, which includes Pericles and Sterling. Uh, Sterling was a discovery by us when we were, we were doing some drilling at Lady Shenton. Pericles hasn't been mined at all from service, so Pericles and, and Sterling are basically would be new pits and Lady Shenton pit. You can see that this is the red shape is basically the resource projected to surface. So we'd end up with one very large pit or two pits with Sterling being a, a separate one. So there's a lot of potential to, as I mentioned, to, to grow these resources, but we'd really like to get this back into production um, in the near term. Next slide. Now, we also recognise that at Yundaga, this is probably better off being an underground mine rather than a cutback of the, the pit. This is the deepest pit, about 120 vertical metres in the north end, which is the brown shape. We did some uh, underground resources, basically looking at uh, plus two grams per tonne, plus three grams per tonne cutoff. That's the pink shape, so you can see. Uh, once again, limited by drilling. Uh, we, we stopped drilling because just getting a, a, a bit. Well, not too expensive, but we weren't uh, getting the return um, recognition in the marketplace for adding to these resources. So there's a lot of potential to keep on growing those um, resources at depth. We're probably better off putting a decline off the end of the pit there and going straight into the the, um, the ore body and get the restart underground mining and then drill it out from underground. Now the yellow shape is a historic um, mine. So the Princess uh, May shoot went down to 600 vertical meters. So we know these. Uh, resources have deep roots and it's still going. We, we have drilled underneath that and proven that there's still gold going down at 700 metres. A lot of that's been stoked out, but that just gives you um, an indication of the potential for these these shoots to, 
to continue at, at, at depth and really need to be just um, uh, drilled more. So using a three gram cutoff, we have 59,000 ounces at 4.56 grams per tonne. So this is quite high grade and we'll be able to truck that quite a long distance to, to mills. So there's a lot of uh, potential ways we could skin this cat basically. And that's uh, the last slide, David. Thanks, Ed. Great presentation and uh, clearly a very interesting project that uh, investors and others should be watching. For the benefit of um, those watching online, can you explain the importance of being on a granted ML versus being on an expiration licence or other form of licence? Yeah, well, that'll save us at least a year of getting into production. So if it's already granted, we don't have to go through that process again, um, particularly with the mines department being snowed under um, right now. We still need the, um, you know, the engineering uh, you know, the plan, the, the mine plan to be approved and uh, environmental permits, but basically it just really speeds up the whole um, process and it means we can get into production in less than 12 months rather than two to three years. Now, whenever anyone talks about Kalgoorlie and areas north of Kalgoorlie and, and prolific gold um, producing areas such as Kalgoorlie and the gold fields, and I'll probably ask Alan the same question, they assume that everything's been explored, everything's been found and there's nothing left. How do you, first of all, how do you get your hands on something as exciting as this, but how do you apply modern technologies and modern techniques and what, what advantage is that giving you beyond what, you know, was even occurring 10 or 15 years ago? Yeah, well, all the easy stuff's been found, that's for sure. And um, we have to go further afield and, and under salt lakes and more remote areas, but also at depth. Um, previous drilling was quite limited, like, for example, in our um, deep drilling. Uh, this Menzies project, we only had 20 holes, which were drilled to 200 metres depth over the entire project area. Nowadays, with the, the drill rigs are, are, are much better. They have much larger capacity. So the RC rigs, for example, can easily drill down to 400 metres. And the diamond rigs can go, you know, thousands of, of, of metres. So that sort of uh, things have improved a lot and continue to improve. And you know, the, the, the drilling companies we have in WA are world leading. So that really helps and they build their own rigs. Um, also, the geophysical um, techniques have improved. They help us much more with um, defining the, the structural targets and uh, not just with the magnetics, but you know, with gravity and other other. Um, uh, methods like that. So we can test more conceptual targets under covered areas. So if it's covered by sand or covered by a salt lake, and that we, we can test those with more confidence than they could have um, done 20 years ago. And like you say, even though 20 years ago wasn't the old timers, but the easy stuff was found. But what we're seeing more and more now is um, even things that um, historically would have walked, been walked over and walked past are now yielding significant ore bodies. Yeah, it, part of it's also the exploration or the prospecting goes in phases, you know, when gold prices are up, um, you know, we, we can probably fund and do appropriate exploration. When when uh, prices are down, we, we have to be very selective and we can't do half as much um, as we would like. And that's been part of the reason for all the, some really good discoveries, um, very good um, discoveries in Western Australia, not just in gold in, in recent years, but it's because the geologists have finally had enough money to do effect, uh, more effective exploration and not stop after you know getting a few discouraging results. So these things can take years to to un, unfold, and um, that that's normal. Finding stuff in the first six months of an exploration program is very very unusual. And talking about activity and being busy, you guys are clearly active and and busy and have to find all bodies. Um, so are your neighbours and everyone's busy around you and, and how much do you learn from each other? But also, how much do they watch what you're doing with an eye on, you know, potentially aggregating or bringing things together? Yeah, everyone's watching everyone else. <laughs> Don't worry about that. And, um, uh, and even conferences like diggers and dealers, it's, it's great. You, you can go and talk with all the other, other parties, all the neighbours, not just the neighbours, but, you know, to see what they're doing and how they're progressing and, if someone makes some sort of um, breakthrough from an exploration technique or you know figure out, figures out something new, that becomes reasonably um, public fairly soon, and 
you know, we, we, we learn from each other and, and that's good. And we'd like to see other uh, companies in the neighbourhood be successful because that does mean that mergers and acquisitions are, are more likely and ultimately that benefits the shareholders, which is, you know, our, our main gain. Our main aim is to reward the shareholders. So that gives us other options um, rather than every company try to build their own mill and go into production, which doesn't make economic sense. Um, it's, it's good for the whole neighbourhood to be um, having some um, success, basically. And final question here from um, maybe a shareholder, but certainly someone very interested in the King West story. Can you explain the similarities between Sir Lawrence and the Kanana Bell and Kanana Bell geologically? Yeah, the, the similarities as we well, currently uh, and so far the, the model stands it is based on the lithostructural settings, which basically means the, the lithologies or the rock types are similar or almost almost the same, you know, particularly the conglomerate unit. Uh, and the structural settings is this the, the it's not just a typical uh, shear zone, north south shear zone. We have those D4, D3 uh, structures. So, northeast, southwest, intersecting the northwest, southeast structures. And where you get those intersections, that's where you get most of the gold falling, falling out. So, you need that structural trap basically for large gold deposits. And at Kadama Bell, they have the same uh, structural setting. Brilliant. Ed, thanks for a great presentation. King West Resources Limited stock code KWR, clearly a company to watch. A hidden gem has been uncovered. Thanks for your time. Thank you, David.